do you maintain unconscious bias? How do you maintain inclusivity? And it is really through active engagement, consistent engagement, making sure it's not a one time. Okay, great, Trisha, we have this one on one. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the network of women. Moving on. You know, it is a very constant level of engagement to make sure you're continually feeling safe, feeling welcome, feeling like you belong. You have to be a very empathetic DEI leader if you want to have results. So without the empathy and without the emotional intelligence that you can bring to the table in that leadership capacity, you're not going to be able to really drive the diversity, equity and inclusion conversation in a very meaningful way. You know, it's it's also about giving consultants, giving students, giving creatives the opportunity to tell their stories. It's not so much always about our stories. Uh, I believe Sarah said this earlier. You have to meet people where they are, and so if you can if you can allow that person to tell their story and talk about their struggles, their vision, their hopes and dreams, I think that's extremely powerful. Leaders should definitely take the time to learn about other cultures and about their workforce. But I do think, you know, as employees, it's also we have, you know, we're ambassadors for our communities, right? Regardless of what anyone says, I truly believe that we're all ambassadors, right? And I think it's our duty as well to enlighten our leaders a little bit on on what our cultures are like, and in in some way or some form, right? It's it's a two way street. It's not just about creating that space. It's also about giving credit to the, and amplifying voices when it's an idea. So, if mm -hmm. I just kind of have an idea in a meeting. You say, "Hey, he had this great idea," and this is how. Like, so it's part of the belonging is acting upon and then also recognizing the, this, the um, ideas.